What is up guys, my name is Inspector McDuck, and literally the same day that I uploaded my top 5 skills to keep at max level video, someone messaged me in the game and asked if I could do the best red skills, so here we are. Um, but first, it, this is a bit trickier to cover than just um, the general skills, so there's some things we need to keep in mind before we get into it. Um, most importantly, we need to take note of which parts of a red skill require them to be fully leveled to be effective, and which aren't contingent on that. So when you unlock a red skill, there's usually multiple abilities tied to it. Some of them are based on level, and some of them just happen, guaranteed. Also, it's always better to use hero chips to unlock a red skill, even at its base level, before spending chips to increase your tuned stars. That's way more useful because you get an additional skill, and again, a lot of them are multifunctional. Um, and with a recent update to the game, rating elite mode gives you guaranteed skill chips for your red skills. So it's easier than ever to unlock red skills. So again, as soon as you hit red zero for a tune, unlock that red skill before you start spending chips to increase their stars. Uh, that's gonna help you way more. So I'm actually going to split this video into two parts based on uh, red skills that need to be maxed to be effective and ones that are effective just unlocking at base. Um, so I'll add chapter points uh, to this video so you can jump around to the different sections uh, if you'd like. So first let's talk about red skills that need to be maxed out to be effective. Okay, if there's only one thing you take away from this whole video is that you need to max out Mad Hatter's red skill, um, pass the T. Uh, allies are immune to debuffs for the first four seconds of each wave. Now, this is dependent on uh, making sure the skill's level is maxed out, but it's definitely worth it. This is insanely good. Um, it protects you from silences, uh, stuns, hexes, all that stuff. Um, I won't get into a specific list of circumstances where this is good, but you can use it in so many situations on offense and defense. And in my opinion, this is the number one must-have red skill in the game. Um, and an important note, Make sure you keep his purple skill, Max 2, Oblivious, um, which makes him immune to debuffs as well. Otherwise, he could still fall victim to a stun or something, uh, so this is important too. So next up is Pete with his red skill, um, Mighty Pete. <laughs> and um, uh, this not only gives him a damage boost, but most importantly, his attacks uh, remove Reflect. Um, again, this skill depends on it being maxed out, so make sure you do that. Um, this is a great alternative to using Tron on offense, uh, especially if you pair it with the Minnie Mouse Friendship Disc, uh, which stuns enemies who have Reflect applied. So basically at the start of battle, anyone with Reflect is stunned by Pete, and then when he attacks them, it removes the Reflect. So it's pretty awesome. Okay, next up is Ian. Um, Ian's a pretty good hero, but if you get his red skill maxed out, it takes him to the next level. So, stronger magic. Um, once again, there's a guaranteed ability and one that's contingent on uh, the skill's level. Um, in this case, when Ian applies Reflect to an ally and they take damage, Ian gains energy from it. Um, if the skill level is below the ally's level though, then he's not guaranteed to get the energy, which is you know why it needs to be maxed out. Um, this is huge in situations where you have multiple tunes on a line with Reflect, um, because it can enable Ian to gain a lot of energy quickly to fire off his white skill and do some big damage and knockback. All right, next up is Zeus um, with Ruler of the Sky. Um, there's a lot of stuff to read here, but the thing we want to focus on is the sap and energy steal. Um, so the first line here says that Lightning Storm now saps enemies. Um, Lightning Storm is Zeus's white skill, and if you're using his Hades uh, friendship disc, he automatically uses this skill at the start of battle, uh, and it doesn't require any energy. So, when paired with his maxed out red skill, he'll sap enemies, and with the disc, sapped enemies also lose 25% of their energy. Um, and this number is lower if you don't have the friendship disc maxed out, but um, either way, his red skill, white skill, and Hades disc all combine for an amazing attack at the start of battle. Okay, so the last skill I want to talk about that's important to keep at max level is Chippendale's red skill, uh, Ready to Rescue. Um, this skill is amazing already because at base level it adds increased attack and movement speed um, to their white skill, Chipmunk Cheer. But if you have it maxed out, they will also give every ally uh, four stacks of Hardy, which is insane. Um, every stack of Hardy that a character has blocks one debuff from being applied to them, which is crazy good uh, when going up against a team that may rely heavily on debuffs. Um, this skill is also great because their blue skill, Ranger Plane, 
flies them over the enemy team at the start of battle, um, doing damage and giving them energy. And then their purple skill uh, gives them 750 energy at the start of battle anyway, which effectively means it almost guarantees that they'll use their white skill within the first few seconds of a fight, uh, giving your whole team the hardy bonus. So now that we've covered the skills that are important to keep maxed out, um, let's go over a few that have some really strong uses that don't depend on skill level to be effective. Um, so first is Magara. Um, while her red skill silent treatment um, does have a contingency um, that applies to her blue skill, which damages and silences an enemy, um, what's even more useful is that any buffs that are applied to Magara can be duplicated to a hero that she links to, um, which is how her white skill functions. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can use this, but one of the most common advantages is using a hero like Ian or Draken to give Meg Reflect, and then having Meg duplicate that Reflect to another hero of your choosing. Okay, next let's talk about Jim uh, and his red skill Energizing Connection. Um, so while his red skill does enable him to energize an ally, um, which is great, more importantly, it gives him a revive mechanic, uh, similar to Angel. Um, now, while this does technically have a level requirement to be most effective, it's not necessary for the skill to work. Um, if you do have it maxed out, it restores 75% of that tune's health, but if you have it at a low level, it basically just means that the hero will only be revived with one hit point or so, but sometimes that's all you need uh, if you have a strong healer on your team. All right, next up is Joy with Positive Thinking. Um, again, this is a multifunctional red skill and part of it does have a level contingency, but fortunately the most powerful part of the skill uh, does not, which is this first sentence here, um, that Joy and her allies can't have buffs removed or stolen by enemies for the first seven seconds of each wave. So if you watched my uh, top five skills video, you know that I love Tron's white skill because it removes all active buffs from enemies. Uh, but Joy's red skill prevents that from happening even at base level. So you can unlock this and leave it at level one and it'll work, which can be great for situations where you're going up against an opponent who relies on buff removal um, like Tron or Pete or Jesse. Okay, next up is Ariel. Um, Ariel is a monster and <laughs> and I, I don't mean she's a monster because she's a mermaid or like a creature. I'm sorry. I love mermaids. Um, sorry if I've offended any uh, mermaid sympathizers. Uh, but her red skill flipping around, um, <laughs> it gives her a uh, team heal at the start of each wave. Now, on the surface, you might wonder how this is good in game modes outside of the campaign. Um, because your team already starts with full health, right? But the reason this is so good is because if you look at her purple skill, uh, C Music, you'll see that when she applies a heal to a hero, it increases their maximum HP for the rest of the wave. So effectively what this does when combined with her red skill is it immediately boosts your entire team's starting hit points at the start of battle. Um, and as an aside, Ariel's purple skill is one of the best in the game to throw mods on uh, because you can see just how much of a hit point boost she can give her team. It's pretty insane. Okay, and last up is Bagheera, one of my favorite tunes in the game. Um, so his red skill, uh, Word of Bagheera, doesn't have any one specific utility that makes it valuable, but it adds so much to his kit overall that it's kind of OP. So to start, um, his white skill, uh, Roar Out, adds fantastic damage on top of already distracting, scaring, and silencing enemies, and giving damage reduction, and making allies invisible. So that's... <laughs> It's kind of nuts. Um, second, his purple skill, Claw Away, um, adds additional healing, um, increasing it from its original value of 50% up to 65%. And finally, it gives everyone five seconds of invisibility when their health drops below 35%. So this is kind of OP for a base red skill, and all of this works just by unlocking it. Uh, the only thing dependent on the skill level is the amount of fantastic damage he does with his white skill, but the rest of the utility is there just by unlocking it. Um, again, I think this is a pretty amazing red skill to have. So that's it for this video. Uh, close YouTube, open Disney Heroes, and <laughs> start grinding Hatter Chips from chapters 7 and 8 in the Elite campaign. Um, and while you're in there, go unlock the red skills for those last five tunes I covered at the end of the video, uh, because they can make a big impact on your game with almost no investment whatsoever. So I hope you guys found this useful, and I appreciate you watching. Uh, McDuck out. Peace.